Next is a cave house museum, one of several in the old town. A recorded commentary in several languages explains all. Dear visitors, welcome to one of the most important Rupestrian sites from life in Matera in times gone by. This unique place, entitled C'era una volta, meaning once upon a time, uses furnishings and sculptures to portray and illustrate life in the home in Matera up until the end of the 60s. As you can see, the room is dug out of the calcareous rock. The only part which is built is the entrance where there is the door, which allowed a little air to circulate as well as the window. The door in this case was the only opening which let in light. The skilled craftsmen have created works of art which are represented by the unique sculptures in Tuf that symbolize in part the crafts, trades and life in the Sassi of Matera. These works of art have been arranged inside the dwelling as they were in the past, where everyone set aside a small space for their domestic activities. In this typical dwelling, you can see three rooms. There is the kitchen area, the stall where there is the donkey and some farmyard animals, and the area where there is a double bed, a cradle for the baby and a raised bed, as well as a small space that was used for the toilet. In that period, the houses didn't have sewers. It has taken the artists about one year to create these works of art, skillfully using their tools. Well, we've found ourselves a cave pub. It would be difficult not to, <laughs> but most of them are hotels or residences. And, or churches. Uh, yeah. But we struck lucky here. We did. OK, it's another excuse to go inside a cave dwelling, but this friendly bar is on the tourist trail, very welcome on yet another hot day. Now it's onwards and upwards from Via Fiorentini. One of the lovely things about this town is the way you can just meander anywhere. There's no special route, there's no particular way you have to go, and it's not crowded. You're just on your own looking at amazing things. Dave and I have heard that a new James Bond movie is being filmed here this week, but we haven't seen a glimpse of Daniel Craig or any shooting today. Mel Gibson visited Matara too, whilst making The Passion of the Christ, but that was a while back. This UNESCO-listed site is quite affluent now, with thousands of visitors passing through every day. In fact, it's Basilicata's number one tourist attraction. But it wasn't always so. In the early 20th century, this area was a byword for poverty. Until the 1950s, hundreds of families, often quite large, were still living in the cave houses. The squalor and the malaria-ridden conditions became a national scandal. And finally, the residents were moved by law to modern buildings on the plateau above. We've reached the top of the old town and can see more cave destinations to go inside. This includes a number of ancient churches which Matara is also famous for. clean lines of the Romanesque 13th century cathedral are quite a contrast to the jumble of dwellings we've seen on our walking trail. But the elegant rose window above only hints at the lavish Baroque interior. We head back towards where we've parked the Lambrini and stop off at Piazza Vittorio Veneto in the new town. There's a way down to see more sassi from here and more underground sites like the Polombaro Lungo, a giant cistern which had supplied water to Matarans for hundreds of years. Absolutely fascinating. <laughs> 